Well, it is a snowy and windy and all around kind of nasty February 5th, I think. So it's Saturday. Um, we have not gotten out much lately. It's been a uh, cold January, cold and windy. I think the average temperature at the airport uh, down close to town is about negative one and a half degrees for the month of January. And here I'm sure it's colder than that, two or three below zero as an average temperature, not an average low. Uh, so it was a tough January to get out. We did not get out as much as we wanted to. Um, combine that with the uh, unbelievable amount of Boundary Waters reservations because of the uh, decreased permits and the perceived uh, scarcity of permits. You can still get permits. There's plenty of permits available. Um, so don't worry about it. Uh, unless you want to go in at Clearwater or Duncan, then worry about it. But uh, overall, there's plenty of permits available for the summer season. But anyway, uh, a few years ago, actually more than a few, I did a ice fishing uh, video that was the gear that we bring. And I was looking at it this morning and realizing that it is uh, extremely outdated. So this is the second version of that. And we'll start with electronics. So these are the most common electronics that you're going to see me with. Uh, out there. We don't bring a lot in the way of electronics, uh, but one big change was going to the Helix 7, and it's an incredible unit. The uh, auto charting is amazing. It is so cool to be able to uh, record all the spots you fish, uh, whether at open water or uh, through the ice, and come back to the exact same spots. Um, so that's been really, really good. Now, uh, one huge thing that I would recommend anyone that's going to fish up in the boundary waters a lot get would be swap out your lead battery for a Dakota lithium battery. They are so much lighter than the uh, lead acid batteries. They are just amazing. And then we've got this same battery in the power pack that every single person that posts fishing videos on YouTube has. It's, uh, it's great. You can uh, charge your stuff. Uh, run lights, it's a backup battery in case something happens to the battery on your graph. So it's really cool. Um, the other thing that we use all the time, especially if we're going to hike a long ways, we don't bring this if we're really going to hike, but this is nice. It's just a power pack. Keeps stuff charged. It won't power this thing, but uh, it will power cell phones, GoPros, things like that. All right, let's take a look at rods. So uh, I don't think any of these rods were in the video I made five, six years ago. Everything is new since then. Um, I've really branched out to uh, <laughs> higher quality and more and different kinds of rods. But this is most of everything that we're using right now. So here, starting going from lightest to heaviest, this is a Della Bay 15 for 2. And it is a great stock trout and crappie rod. It's got uh, some small, what is that, thousand size Shimano and four pound test. Um, mostly use it for stock trout. This next one is the lamp lighter and this is a great walleye and small lake trout rod. I think I've got 10 pound uh, braid and an eight pound fluorocarbon leader and also my favorite go-to uh, jig for small lake trout, Northland Buckshot Jig. Going up in heaviness, and this is a really excellent all-around lake trout and big walleye rod, is the Devil Bay Rip and Rattle. Um, that's got a, the first real full-size Shimano reel on it. That's a 2500 Stratic. This is a great all-around lake trout rod for small lake trout up to pretty big fish. And I've got uh, probably 25 pound Power Pro and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader on there, I think. And then some Kalen soft plastic and jig that I found. This is the rod you probably see me with the most. Uh, this is the Double Bay Compensator. It's definitely my favorite lake trout jigging rod if you're fishing for fish that can get over 25 inches. Uh, it is excellent. That's got the same reel, 2500 Stratic, 
with 25 pound braid and a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Then onto the hot rod. I've had this rod forever. This is the medium light uh, hot rod uh, casting and it's great. Got my favorite tube set up on there. I don't remember the line on this, probably 20 pound braid and a 10 or 15 pound leader. Um, it's a little soft, but uh, it works really well for a uh, medium sized lake trout. And then I've got several rods like this one, but I just brought one out to show. This is a, a medium heavy hot rod. And it, uh, or is it medium? Let's see. Medium heavy. It, uh, it's got the 2500 Stratic, 25 pound braid, 15 pound leader, and it's set up for a uh, quick straight rig. It's got uh, the two hooks, and I use this rod and, and a couple more just like it for the set lines um, on like an iFish Pro or a uh, first strike flag thing that I'll show in just a minute. So those are the rods that we use. Um, it's kind of an ever-changing variety. I think that by this time next year, I'll have different rods in here because it's always fun to use new gear. All right, so let's talk about set lines. Um, one secret is that I do not like tip-ups, and I don't use them anymore. I um, haven't used them for quite a while. I don't like hand-lining fish. If I'm going to catch fish, I want to catch it on a rod and a reel. So we use set lines that use rods and reels. Of course, like everyone in the world, we have an iFish Pro, but the issue is you have to carry this thing. So when you're hiking into the boundary waters, like two or three miles, you don't want to carry that big thing. Uh, so I got turned on to these first strike ice fishing flags and they're pretty neat. This is the setup. The little flag clamps onto your rod there and you can run the line around that doohickey right there. And I use these little re line retainer clips right there because this system really works best with either loosening your drag up completely or like an Akuma bait feeder reel. Um, and I don't have one of those. So what I do is just use the retainer clip there and that works just fine. Um, this little stand it's on folds up, um, but it is not necessary. Um, I actually got this stand this year and I've been using these for like two years. In the past, I've just set this flag system up and set the rod either in a little rod holder or just on my pack. Um, but the way it works is the line hooks onto that little thing there and it's free spooling. And when something grabs it and it pulls free, the line comes up and out it goes. And they are really cool. Here's the uh, container they come in. They just come in this little thing right there, and that's all you have to really carry. You don't really need the stand as long as you, as long as you have something you can uh, set the rod in. So in terms of ultralight setup, uh, they're incredible. Uh, they weigh next to nothing at all. So um, you don't see them very much, you know, on fishing shows and stuff like that. And I'm kind of surprised because it's a really clever little product. I love them. All right, let's take a look at baits. Uh, specifically stuff that's relatively new that I've been using. Um, I have a video from a few years ago uh, that goes over lake trout lures up here and that is basically unchanged. I think um, just about everything that I'm going to look at here, some form of that was in that video. Uh, so that really hasn't changed at all, like the rods and stuff like that have changed. But here's some new stuff. Uh, the TC Moto tubes. These are fantastic. Um, that is a big tube to use up here. There are not a lot of applications for, for a, what is that, five, six inch tube. Um, few lakes up here are worth using a tube like that. A lot of them, that's just overkill. You're not going to catch very many fish. Um, uh, but the quality, the hooks, uh, the build on those is just unbelievable. The big nasty tackle company, Glowing Spoons, these are really cool. They really glow. Um, this is something that I think like North Central Minnesota is super familiar with. I had not heard them heard of them till last year, and they work great for lake trout, walleyes, and of course eel pout. Um, we got the Frostbite Dragon Slayer that you see all over YouTube, uh, which is pretty much just another version of something like these guys, which are the Kalen's Tickle Minnow and Tickle Tail. 
These are probably my favorite baits right now. Um, so those are the new baits. Not much has really changed. Um, one thing I can say has changed is I've gone to a higher end fluorocarbon. And man, oh man, does that make a difference. Um, I don't know how, how many times I was tying a knot in cold weather, your hands are cold and the line kinks and you break it or something like that with cheaper fluoro. And I haven't had that problem at all with this higher Seeger stuff, um, the Invisix. So highly recommend that. It's kind of expensive, um, but it lasts a long time. You don't use large, large amounts of it at once. I only use like five feet at a time. So uh, def definitely worth the money. I had to uh, step outside to grab the augers um, to wrap this video up. And the weather's getting a little nicer. The wind's dying down. It snowed about, oh, maybe an inch today. Um, but it looks like the shore is getting way more than that. Uh, and that's just fine with me. But it's nice to freshen things up a little bit. Let's talk about augers. If you're going to buy an auger for a boundary water strip, you want to buy a Nils auger. Um, Nils hand augers are far and away the best hand auger you can buy. Uh, it is much, much easier to drill with them. And that makes a huge difference when you're drilling through 30 inches of ice. Um, in terms of size, uh, if you're fishing in any body of water where you could get a fish over 30 inches, whether that be walleye, northern, lake trout, I think you should be using an 8-inch auger. Um, one, it's just you're going to be able to land the fish. Um, if you catch a two, true trophy, it's not going to get wedged in the bottom of the hole. Um, two, if you catch if you catch a nice fish, but you know a fish that would fit through a six-inch hole, you could lose it um, at the bottom of a six-inch hole, even though it would fit because you're just trying to thread the needle. Whereas going through an eight-inch hole, um, it might pop right up. So. If, if you're going to be fishing for bigger fish, you want to use the 8-inch hand auger. Um, it's not worth the uh, stress of getting that trophy and then losing at the bottom of the hole because it really can't fit up the hole. Uh, but these are the two augers that we use. This is the folding nils. That is very, very nice. Um, you can carry it like this. You can put it in a backpack. It uh, breaks down in the middle right there. Careful not to lose this wing bolt thing right there, otherwise you'll be in trouble. And careful not to lose the wing nut here, because uh, then you're going to be out of luck. The 8 inch is this big thing right here. And it's a little heavy, but it definitely is worth it. Um, it doesn't collapse down as much, but it's still not too bad to carry. You can either just carry it. Um, we've also strapped them to packs, and we also have... <laughs> fell. Uh, we also have uh, put them on sleds and stuff like that. So there it is. Really, if you take one thing away from this, if you're going to buy a hand auger for fishing in the boundary waters, uh, make sure it's a Nils.